Hello everyone, Pulse here and welcome to the premiere episode of my uh, next potential new series, Impulse Reactions. Now the base idea of this show is to be essentially my take on news uh, with the idea being instead of a scheduled and uh, overly stuffed style of news coverage that a lot of other people do, I kind of want to do my own take on the thing where I, I kind of single out one thing that really catches my fancy that's going on in recent. It's not going to be something I can do like, oh, this this is important, let me cover that. It'll be more of just whatever catches my eye within the gaming world and is somewhat recent. And then I'm just going to give my first reactions, my first thoughts uh, about it. And then if there's uh, enough want to see more, I can potentially take the discussion into other videos. Uh, but for this premiere episode of Impulse Reactions, we will be discussing uh, EverQuest Next and its real uh, true reveal, I will say, at QuakeCon and, and how I feel about the game now that it's kind of been revealed to the world. Now to start off, I just want to say that EverQuest EverQuest Next was a game that I had absolutely zero interest in and I wasn't following whatsoever. Um, I never played the original EverQuest, but uh, I seriously believe it's one of those titles that um, it both shaped the gaming world and propelled the MMO design in particular with a certain design philosophies and different uh, pillars of what MMOs are supposed to have. It really started that movement for MMOs to grow into a genre. However, I also feel that it's one of those things that um, people will defend it to the end uh, only out of nostalgia uh, instead of actual logic and uh, like true uh, argument there that makes sense um, and, and I know a lot of people don't don't like to hear that but that's just it's neither here nor there I just wanted to let people know that uh, I, I don't really follow EverQuest and I've kind of had this uh, maybe deep-seated disgust maybe for uh, EverQuest because of the community is one of those that's so nostalgia driven but that's that's not uh, here nor there because EverQuest Next is a brand new thing and it's something that um, it actually had a pretty impressive showing at QuakeCon and I have to say it really took me by surprise as it did with many. I feel like there's a lot of people kind of in my same boat that they know what EverQuest was but didn't really have any clue uh, as to what EverQuest Next could possibly do to, to change it from being anything other than a copy paste of any other MMOs. And um, uh, there's there's just a lot in this game that uh, is is pretty exciting. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to read actual like right off of the official list of important features that's on their site, uh, and then just give my first impressions and thoughts on what uh, EverQuest Next is promised to be uh, with this reveal, and uh, and then what it could turn into throughout its development and and post release. But uh, the first thing they have listed here: build everything. Create and build anything you can imagine with landmarks, uh, state-of-the-art tools. You have unprecedented control over your creations. A range of materials with realistic physics means uh, how you build makes a difference. Now, this is a, a pretty amazing, uh, like sort of design philosophy they have with this part of the game. Uh, and I'm super excited for the possibilities of what this system of sort of voxel-based building and destruction, I might add, that's a very important part of this as well, uh, and what those uh, the systems there can produce when put into the hands of the dedicated player base. Um, as you can see in the background, either it's, it's either gone by or it's playing now, or you'll see it very shortly, uh, is the building potential, uh, the world customization that you can do, um, and the destruction as well. You'll see there's a part with a large giant that crushes the hell out of this building. Uh, and it, it's pretty astounding, actually. It's super exciting to see what this system of voxel-based building and world creation can do. Uh, next up, they say explore. Explore massive landmark worlds and claim territory, building materials, and much more. Delve deep into the earth and discover procedurally generated adventures that will never be the same twice. Now, as I lightly mentioned earlier, uh, this game facilitates the ability to both build and destroy massive amounts of the world. Now, what is exciting about that is that even though uh, it can't be 100% damaged, the world uh, does generate, uh, or regenerate rather, itself over a certain amount of times. We don't really know the, the specifics on how it will heal itself, 
but but the thing is the world is procedurally generated right so that means even though you may create this crater or dig a massive cave or plummet down from your level to the sub layers uh, and there's just a whole discussion about that but uh, the the idea is that you can really alter the world but every time you go back to the area which you have altered earlier or someone else has altered it will not come back and regenerate exactly the same so you could even uh, like generate different sub layer dungeons and different encounters and different experiences uh, based on on how uh, massive this sort of scope of procedural generation they have under the hood depending on how extensive that is the the, the number of experiences that I, I can just think of uh, how they could change even if it's slight changes it is different and it keeps ex exploration exciting uh, and the other thing that I, I want to mention too is that they they say claim territory uh, but you can you can break and build and oh it's just super exciting to, to think it kind of in conjunction with the build anything that they they posted prior to this um, is just how the player base will be able to affect the world uh, between building and exploring and just uh, all of the different mechanics that go into the way that the world is generated and can be affected. Now in it in addition to that and kind of on the same light as that uh, their next point is uh, make your mark. The best, the best buildings players create will become part of Norath, the EverQuest next world, forever. Um, we will run exclusive contests to design parts of the world and our designs uh, designers will keep an eye out for the coolest fortresses, castles, caves, tree houses, fireplaces, or anything awesome that fits within the world of Norath. Now, this is such a cool way for developers to integrate the creativity and the building capabilities uh, into the very game world uh, of their player base, I should say. Uh, I mean, the potential of this system is that they can do these contests, or maybe even out of random pick people that are just really providing uh, great content in terms of world building, they can take these cre uh, creatively driven players and people and give them a sense of prestige and accomplishment by embellishing the very game world with uh, these permanent structures that they have created or even at the very least had an influence on. Uh, but even more exciting than that though is this sort of potential that maybe down the line after a substantial time past release and with uh, like just for example if you have one or two guys that kind of partner up I mean you see this in Minecraft all the time these like building teams uh, just imagine if there's a, a couple building teams or the, this group of people that really uh, they get together and they just really create badass stuff and, and they legitimately provide a large number of players with uh, experiences they wouldn't have had without their creating things uh, the, the potential is that these people that um, put a lot of time and invest hard work into the game, uh, maybe they can be contacted and placed into an actual job somewhere within SOE as a game designer or a developer. I mean, this is something that has become popular in the last few years with YouTubers and bloggers for a while. Um, and I can totally see SO utilizing the talents of its most prestigious players and the player groups by allowing them to join their internal dev teams. Uh, and that's really exciting because um, I'll say this all the time, but the player base and the people that just, they don't actually go for the game development jobs. They do it out of passion when they get into a game that they are really immersed in or they're really excited about. Those are the people that create the best stuff. That's, that's where you get people that have created, um, like Dota is a good one that comes to mind right now. Uh, it's just something that he said, oh, we have the tools, let's make something new and original, and then holy shit, a couple years down the line, MOBA is a new thing. The, the fact is that the people that put themselves into p the position of a designer without actually being one, and they create these amazing things, uh, it's, it's really exciting to think that in a couple years, something that somebody else built in this game in EverQuest Next uh, could potentially turn into something enormous like a MOBA. Uh, but next on the list after that is uh, they've listed Collect, uh, the rarest resources, objects, gear, and character customizations and secrets are scattered across the worlds uh, of Landmark. Uh, can you find everything? 
Now, this idea of exploration and collection while out and about in this procedurally generated world and uh, the player enhancements that are also on the, the world, uh, it just sounds like a, a massive pile of icing on this already delicious cake that uh, EverQuest Next is, is seeming to be, uh, assuming you can keep all the promises, of course. Now, exploration is something that I, I feel, and I, I've said in a couple of my other videos, um, it's something that has been stripped away and lost from MMOs and RPGs alike, and uh, this resurgence of, of trying to provide players with that sense of legitimate exploration and that sense of wonder you get when exploring, that accompanied by the procedural generation and the very nature of how their game world is going to work, um, it just, it really is something I can't wait to experience for myself. Uh, and, and I'd really like to see this kind of come to fruition in the best way possible because there, there's admittedly a lot of things that could go wrong because it is an MMO. Um, but I really want to experience it for myself. Um, SOE, if you're listening, that's a hint for a beta key because that would be really awesome. Uh, I really want to try out all the different mechanics in this game. But uh, on to the next one anyway. Uh, their, their last thing they have here is earn money. Buy and sell items in the player studio, SOE's marketplace for player created goods. Design, create, sell, and uh, yeah, create and sell items and earn real world cash on every purchase. Um, now, I must admit, this is the worrisome one of the bunch, uh, and it's kind of the one I, I wish I hadn't seen because everything else just is so positive. Uh, but I can't really be taken down because there's still a potential for uh, s severe amounts of awesomeness with this, especially with paired with everything else that I've already talked about. Uh, if they handle this uh, marketplace, this player-to-player -player marketplace, if they handle it very well and really limited the amount of things that they're allowed to do to the point that it doesn't uh, hinder other player experiences, um, uh, what I mean by that is they, they don't they don't need to make this uh, a Diablo fiasco is, is what I'm trying to get across here. They, they need to be careful with the way that they do this and um, it, it can be done because I, I do feel like with the way that you can generate the, the world and then have the players mess with it, um, I, I do feel like what they can do is um, they can take the, the marketplace and make it only cosmetic flavor items uh, player housing themed stuff for decoration and then maybe even s uh, world editing items uh, such as pre-crafted uh, like sets of like maybe ruins is an example that came to mind um, and, and they could maybe sell the the pre-made rooms or that that way people can if they don't have the time but they would they still like something that they they want to create they can maybe take the the templates that other people have created and then add their own little flavor if they they keep it to that sort of stuff i i think it could turn out okay but they do need to be very careful because it, it, it's kind of worrisome now uh, what i want to finish off here is i just want to say that what is really exciting to me for everquest next is that they seem to have really taken the time to put a check next to nearly all of the tick boxes for what an MMO needs uh, and what the MMO genre needs to start doing to create this immersive feel that has been lost uh, as, the as the genre has grown up and grown stale. Uh, but alongside that, they've also uh, made sure to appeal to people that like to play the, the decorator and the architect and the world builder. And, and I can really see EverQuest next grabbing people of all play styles with all sort of tastes when it comes to what they like to do when gaming uh, with these different design pillars of you can play the MMO like uh, just for example I can really see the MMO vets uh, gravitating towards this game for the fast paced combat uh, I'm sure you've seen in the background there where it shows them running kind of almost parkour style and it's just very fast paced and impactful uh, especially with the way that your spells and attacks leave indentions and marks on the world um, even though that's not the, the way that you're supposed to build the fact is that that's pretty realistic the way that you can it, maybe not spells obviously, or a lion man crack, cracking a hammer into a rock, but the fact is that you leave a scar on the world, and it may be temporary, but that impactfulness is really empowering when you like combat. 
Um, and, and then in addition to that, I can see the explorers uh, really having this uh, unending possibility to explore every nook and cranny because of the way that the um, uh, just the, the world generates and procedurally changes. And the, the real potential here is that even over a long course of time, uh, they, the developers will be able to change the world also. So even if something does become stale, they can seemingly, with these tools of their own, change up how the world uh, regenerates maybe. Uh, so they can meet, maybe just for an example here that one just popped into my head, is uh, through the dynamic event system that they've kind of hinted at uh, happening, they can provide uh, an earthquake that will leave a large scar on the planet uh, to the point that there's now this huge crevice in between two castles that were once fighting. So now these players have the options to build um, uh, bridges and things like that, uh, and, and maybe this will be a, a permanent feature, and, and just the fact that now this is something more that can be edited, and the, and the more that they edit and destroy and reconstruct uh, this crevice that they've been provided through the new dynamic system, uh, that will regenerate in a different way now. So there's just there's so much for the explorers uh, in the world that they can they can really just go about their day, and then when they come back into the game, maybe they'll just realize, oh my goodness, uh, I've been here before, but it, it just has a completely different flavor. Uh, um, I'm let me see here, the designers and builders who whom like to create more than play will also like this game um, that really goes without saying because they can they can take all of their imagination and apply it to this game really pretty substantial amounts because they've shown the way that you can build the blocks but the way that you can change the edges and tweak all the little details the, the detail oriented people are going to lose so many hours with this game uh, and that's not just saying that that's a potential thing that is a gonna happen if there's some people that get in this game and they fall in love with the the ability to design their own worlds and houses and all of that stuff oh man there's gonna be hours spent hardcore on that um, but in in the same light of those people you also have the role players and and if SOE does even a little bit to accommodate to uh, writing your own stories and creating your own adventures uh, there's really this uh, sense of role play which will come about in a different way than other MMOs mainly because of the, the world's always changing and, and it means that you can run stories uh, that would technically be in the same place but it will have changed the, the outcome of where you go and uh, what you do because it is always changing um, it's, it's a really a fantastic mix that they have that, that they have going here because uh, like I said, you have the MMO vets going for combat and the typical MMO stuff. You have the explorers ha having tons and tons of uh, exploration and possibilities with where they go in new places because it, it generates differently all the time. Uh, you have the designers and the builders, which will just spend hours and hours creating stuff. And these are potentially the people that will go on to create contest winners with their, with their uh, buildings or their different little objects. Uh, and then the, the role players, they have uh, they have a way to uh, explore the world, but create their own stories here. Uh, and really, the only thing that they could have said, and uh, they would have really improved even more what they've already given us, is if they had confirmed like a, a hardcore in-game PvE system uh, akin to raiding. And that's only because that is such a large portion of MMO players that um, even though this game might not appeal to those players, if they had put that in, it would just be another tick box checked for who this game can appeal to. And then in addition to that, uh, and I really hope that this is the case, and I, I think that's what they're going for as well, is large scale PvP, which would take advantage of the procedural generation uh, to really keep encounters randomized and exciting. And I say that I feel this one is, is gonna be a part of what they announce next, mainly because they they said somewhere on here let me see if i can find it again yeah explore they said explore massive landmark worlds and claim territory which to me says that you will be able to take these player built fortresses and castles and there's going to be kind of this ongoing struggle between the players and the world itself even uh that's really exciting to me uh they might have to do some servers uh, like 
changes so that there's a PvP realm, for example, and a in a non-aggressive PvE realm. If they if they really feel that there's uh, too much of a difference of, of who control on who and that sort of stuff, but th the fact is that that's a really cool sort of uh, mechanic if if that gets put into the game because procedural generation alongside this ability to destroy uh, other people's creations is. It's one of those things where I can really see people putting a lot of time into their castles to create legitimately strong defensive uh, outer walls, and then somebody else could come along and have uh, their own attacks impact this new castle or this new stronghold. And and then there's that sense of revenge, like that guy, that asshole, he killed my my people and he, he robbed my, my fortress, and, and then he took down that wall we had to rebuild that took ages, now we gotta go get him. The, the back and forth that can come from that is potentially one of the most exciting things I've thought about in an MMO in a long time. Uh, well, guys and gals, I'm, I'm sure you can tell by the way that I've been going through this that um, I'm, I'm incredibly impressed by the unveiling of EverQuest Next and its underlying mechanics. Uh, there's so much I could talk about, but this is intended to be a shorter video style. But don't worry, there, there's going to be enough for sure. Uh, with EverQuest Next and the details that come forward that you will more than likely hear more about the potential of this upcoming free-to-play MMO. Uh, and if you really want to hear some more right away, let me know and uh, really should expect uh, some more in-depth coverage on this game uh, because I feel like this is only scratching the surface and whatever I can scrape up detail-wise, I will definitely pass on to you. Uh, this has been Pulse, guys. Thank you for joining me on this premiere episode of Impulse Reactions. And I want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment down below, and stick to the Nova Pulse Gaming uh, YouTube channel for everything gaming and games industry related. And I will see you on the next one. See you later. Thank mm -hmm. you.